हेलो फ्रेंड्स हाउ आर यू टुडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस एन इम्पॉर्टेंट अपडेट इन प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एट यूजली वी सी दैट इन प्रिवेंशन ऑफ करप्शन एट देर इज़ वन अक्यूज बट इन नंबर ऑफ केसेज देर मे बी टू और मोर देन टू अक्यूज एंड वैन द डिफेंस इज नॉट टेकन प्रॉपरली इन दैट स्नेरियो वन ऑफ द अक्यूज गेट कन्विटेड एंड अदर गेट एक्टिवेटेड so what are the shortcoming while fighting the case under the prevention of corruption act i am going to discuss in this video whenever we are going to fight the case under the prevention of corruption act we should be very much clever we should be very much active and we should plead those fact which are beneficial to us friends as we know that demand is sine qua non for the prosecution of a person under the prevention of corruption act but when the recovery is from you and there are certain other things or other witnesses which may connect you with the crime even on the circumstantial basis in that scenario you should do the cross examination in the proper way so that you could raise a probable defense i want to clarify that for raising the probable defense there is no need for you to come in the witness box as per the protocol of section 315 of crpc but at the same time you could not avoid section 313 of crpc so my submission is that in the case just find out who are the real eye witnesses and who are the hearsay evidences do not focus much and more on the hearsay evidences focus on the eye evidences who witness the ls transaction and heard the ls conversation and if there is a contradiction and their story is going to be mismatch and going to be in contradiction with the prosecution stand or prosecution story in that scenario definitely you will get the benefit so don't be disappointed just work out in the present video i'm going to discuss an important case a recent judgment wherein one of the accused has been convicted due to his own fault while other has been acquitted by his cleverness so all depends upon you in which manner you are going to fight your case so video is important do not skip it and examine it very much carefully and whatever point i'm going to narrate you just note down and make the part of your own notes so that you could fight the case easily and in the efficient manner so i am going to start the presentation let's move on the screen friends in the present case at hand the matter was under section 7 and 31 d of the prevention of corruption act please note down that for section 7 the demand is sign go on if demand is not proved and section 7 itself get doubted in that scenario the accused could not be convicted simultaneously both under section 7 and section 31 d of the prevention of corruption act now we are coming on the fact of the case what are the fact of the case in that case mr a and mr b are the public servant one is village administrative officer and sometime the word used vao vao means village administrative officer and other is village assistant they were found guilty of receiving bribe of rupees 1000 from the complainant to mark the eb transmission line in the fmb sketch the bribe amount was demanded and received by a1 and from out of 1000 a1 has given 100 to his village assistant a2 they both were caught in a trap laid down by the vigilance inspector so these are the primary facts of the present case at hand when the trial has been happened in the present case the trial court convicted them for the offenses under section 7 and 31d of the prevention of corruption act both the accused person had moved before the honorable high court for the purpose of challenging the impugn order by which they were convicted under the prevention of corruption act the basic scenario that they submitted before the high court has applied for electric service connection on 3rd of july 2008 for his newly constructed house he was informed by the clerk in the eb office eb means electricity board office to get signature of vao village administrative officer and submit the application accordingly the concerned complainant obtained the signature of vao and submitted his application in the eb office on the same day next day when he went to the eb office he was informed that eb transmission line must be marked in the fmb sketch again he went to the office of a1 on 25th of august 2008 and met him at 9:30 am friends by the bare perusal of these facts it was quite clear that there is a quite difference between the time gap because initially he was required the connection on 3rd of july and later on the work has been completed by mr vao means accused number 1 without any demand of bribe and later on he was directed to show the eb transmission line in the fmb sketch and later on on 25th of august 2008 he again met with the concerned accused number 1 so the prime key is that 
इन द होल स्नैरियो इन द होल पीरियड ऑफ नियर बाय वन मंथ और मोर देन वन मंथ अप्रॉक्सीमेटली देर इज नो डिमांड बाई अक्यूज नंबर वन सो इट वॉज अ वेरी ब्यूटिफुल केस टू बी कॉन्टेस्टेड एंड टू बी नंबर बट वॉट फॉल्ट दे हैव मेड वी हैव टू सी इन द प्रजेंट कॉन्टेक्सट ऑल्सो फ्रेंड्स इन द प्रेजेंट केस द प्राइम एलिगेशन इज दैट अक्यूज नंबर वन एट दैट टाइम डिमांडेड रुपीज वन थाउजेंड फॉर मेकिंग द ई बी ट्रांसमिशन लाइन इन द एफ एम बी मीन्स फील्ड मेजरमेंट बुक स्केच द कंपनर इन एक्सप्रेस इज इनबिलिटी टू पे द अमाउंट बट एवन रिफ्यूज टू मार्क ई बी ट्रांसमिशन लाइन एंड लेटर ऑन ही अगेन मैट विद द अक्यूज नंबर वन ऑन ट्वेंटी सेवंथ ऑफ अगस्ट टू थाउजेंड एट सो इट इज अनदर अ गुड पॉइंट इन द केस कंपनर इन अगेन on 27th of august 2008 morning met with first accused and requested him to reduce the bribe amount so this is an important uh, point to be argued and to be contested because there is a lot of time gap because the demand should be proximate it should not be after thought it should not be on surmises it should not be on imagination so we could conclude that by having a good case on factual score it doesn't mean that you will win if you are not clever if you are not working on the facts you will definitely lose so in the present case at hand he requested to reduce but he refused he means the accused number one since the first accused was firm in his demand the complainant went to vigilance office on the same day and reported the matter friend at this junction there are two key points number one the first demand number two the second demand and number three the day on which the matter has been reported to the concerned vigilance after a long time without specifying the true facts the matter has been registered with the vigilance and vigilance officials also failed to follow the guidelines of honorable supreme court in lalita kumar versus state of up in which it is held that please hold the preliminary inquiry and then proceed further but what they have usually adopted they proceeded number 2 investigate the matter by being affected from confirmed by as they confirm you as an accused and then investigate the matter and then collect the evidence in the manner by presuming you that you are the real guilt you are the real culprit so in the present case the same scenario has been happened on the same day fir was registered on the same day trap was planned to be organized as i told you earlier complainant again met on 27th of august 2008 morning with the accused number one and requested him to reduce the amount but he did not yield to the request so this is a very good case on that count also because there is a long time gap between the alleged demands but by having a good case doesn't means that you will definitely win to win a case you have to clench out the real facts you have to prepare a defense strategy and apart from that you must be very much careful by making the memorandum to the concerned police while investigation is in progress usually you avoid your advocate suggest to that you should not disclose the defense up to what time you will kept quiet you have to disclose whatever you are having in your mind because if they fail to investigate ultimately they are going to prejudice your rights it is my basic theory my basic practice that disclose everything to them because i really want a real investigation from their side if they fail to investigate the case in that scenario benefit will goes to you because in the cross examination with the concern tlo with the concern you you could ask that this point has been submitted to you why you fail to investigate so this is very much beneficial to you adopt this practice in general routine and definitely you will be succeeded don't worry keeping silence amount to admission note my point keeping silence amount to admission because presumption is against you to rebut the presumption you have to do all the things that could save you from the clinches of the crime so you have to remember all these points while proceeding with the case of the prevention of corruption act so the case is that on the same day he went to the office of ecb and lodged a report but the key point is that the ecb without verifying the facts because as per the legal position laid down by the supreme court in lalita kumari versus state of up they are required to hold the preliminary inquiry but without doing the same they usually engrafted they usually indulge themselves to capture the accused to trap the accused by presuming him the guilt they are being affected by confirmed bias they confirm you as an accused they investigate the matter and collect the evidence in such a manner so that charges could be filed in the anxiety they are not concerned with your rights they are not concerned with your liberty they are not concerned even the constitution of india they are concerned to book you they are concerned to trap you in the present case without any fault of your own so this point have to be clarified in the course of investigation by you and this point have to be clarified by you in the course of trial so that you could show to the court that there was no fault of you there was no demand on your part but despite of that they are registering they are doing the investigation in the anxiety the ultimate aim behind the same is to trap you at any cost so same happened in the present case also but despite of that the concerned accused has not taken the benefit of the concerned case that is totally false that is totally concocted apart from that the case is that 
The complainant gave the tented note to the concerned ACB. They have been counted, and apart from that, the phenolphthalein powder has been applied, and further the proceeding has been done. During the course of proceeding, the verification has been done, the pre-trap has been done, and finally the post-trap has been done, and even the phenolphthalein test has found to be positive. The trial court, after looking into the fact terms circumstances, found the accused guilty. But whenever the argument has been rushed out before the Honorable High Court, the concerned accused counsels emphasize on the following point. What are the point? Point number one. The application for de facto complainant given for EB connection is marked as Exhibit 7. Trial court failed to take note that there is no signature of the EB official or seal of EB department in the said application to indicate that it was submitted in the EB office on the date mentioned by the complaint. There is no indication in the complaint itself. It was written for not accompanied in the FMB sketch without marking of EB transmission line in it. Therefore, the fundamental fact required to be proved that there was a demand to mark EB transmission line in the FMB sketch field. So this is a very important point that has been raised. But the key point is that the accused has taken a contrary plea. On the one hand, he is submitting that there is no work is pending. But apart from that, there is a recovery from him. The court later on found that the two stand cannot be allowed to be continued from the defense point of view. The defense itself not sure what work is pending and what is not pending, whether he was competent for the same or not, whether there is any manipulation on the part of complainant or not, the accused totally failed to give the explanation. So while contesting the case under the Prevention of Corruption Act, it is humbly submitted to all of you. Do not make a contrary plea. Always take a plea of pendency work. There is no pendency work. It is very good plea. Rather than to show that you are not competent for work or, and the work has not been marked to you. Because if the file is recovered from you, there is something pending. But you could show that the work was not pending and you have done the work as per the norms. And inter alia, the complainant with the ulterior motive want to trap out you. And inter alia, he thrust the amount. Or inter alia, he tried to put the same in your pocket and that's why you had been trapped. So these are the probable defenses. Do not make those defenses that may prejudice you, that may affect your rights. Always remember, if you are going to play with your own life, with your own case in the experimental way, ultimately prejudice will be caused to you. You will lose not only the life, liberty, but also the job as well. So be careful while contesting the case of the prevention of corruption. Friend, in this case, subsequently, it has been pointed out that complainant had met accused earlier and got no business certificate and ownership certificate respectively. On those days, accused number one have not demanded any illegal gratification as a motive or reward. While fact being so, it is illogic that he demanded 1000 rupees from complainant on 25th of August 2008. It was a valid point and it is rightly raised before the court. But as I repeated earlier, the defense was contradictory as far as work is concerned. Because he submitted that there is no allegation regarding accused number two that he demanded the illegal gratification from the complainant. Rather than the cases that the accused number 1 demanded and out of 1000 he has given 100 rupees to accused number 2. So without demand the accused could not be convicted and demand is signed one on mere recovery of money could not connect the accused with the crime. Because I specified earlier the cases that accused number 1 demanded as I told you earlier and out of which he gave 100 rupees to accused number 2 and mere recovery of rupees 100 could not connect the accused with section 7 or section 13 d of the prevention of corruption act. It is also submitted that there is no independent evidence to corroborate the alleged demand and whatever witnesses are examined they are not reliable and apart from that there is no efficient evidence on the record to connect the accused with the alleged crime so looking into the fact and circumstances he requested the court to acquit both the accused the court has considered the entire scenario the court has to see whether the evidences are sufficient to connect the accused with the crime or not Friends, in this case, the prosecution has examined the witness. They have also put the documentary evidence. But the key point is that the certain facts are undisputed. Number one, the accused number one is village administrative officer. Accused number two is village assistant. And both are the public servant with the meaning of section 2C of the Prevention of Corruption Act. There is no dispute on that fact. And apart from that, on 28th of August 2008, accused number one and two were present in the office of VAO where the trap operation had been taken place and the complainant who was a resident of a particular village had constructed a house and shot for electricity services connection from the Council Electricity Board of Tamil Nadu. Key point is that the application along with other documents were recovered during the trap proceeding under the recovery mazhar that is exhibit P6 and apart from that the application has been recovered which is duly signed by the concerned complainant and along with the application certain documents has been recovered. So the specific case of prosecution is that marking of EB transmission line in the FMB sketch 
A1 demanded 1000 rupees and on 28 of August 2008 after receiving the bribe amount he marked the transmission line and gave the file to consent defect to complainant and the perusal of FMB's case shows that there is a marking indicating the transmission line. So it is not the case of first accused that the said marking was not made by him. His defense is that he is not competent or authorized to mark the EB transmission line. That was a very wrong defense. Because on the one hand, he is saying that he has not done or he is not competent. On the other hand, the evidence is on the record indicating that he has done something on the file. If the defense is to be taken that there is no pendency of work, I have done the work, so there was no motive. The situation would be different, but he has taken a wrong belief. There is no competency of work and even he has not marked. So if this type of defense has been taken, this defense are liable to be discarded as observed by the Honorable High Court. So whenever you are going to take the defense, do not make a contrary defense. Make a specific defense that work is not pending and work is not pending. If it is not pending, then it is not pending. If you are taking the defense of competency of work, then you have to be very much sure that you have not touched the file and even the file could not be marked to you. And that's why it is not possible to execute the work. So the difference between the pendency of work and competency of work. In pendency of work has been completed. In competency, you are not competent. So there is no question to execute the work. But the accused has taken a contrary plea. On the one hand, he is saying that the work is not pending. And on the other hand, he is saying that the he is not competent. So this defense itself damages the defense theory. And the contrary defense theory itself damages the defense. And court rightly rejected the defense plea as observed by the Honorable High Court. So be careful while taking this defense. And when this defense is going to be affected, the court submitted that, no doubt. Accused number one is not the accused of demanding bribe on earlier occasion. When he gave the NOC on so-and-so date and ownership certificate on so-and-so date. But this will not rule out the possibility to connect the accused with the present crime. The law requires that the demand of alien ratification should exit because it is a foundational fact. And prosecution has to prove the same beyond doubt. In the present case at hand, the concerned complainant spoke out regarding demand by accused number one. He has lost the complaint with vigilance. And apart from that, the same has been reduced into writing. The same has been verified. The same has been further resulted in the trap proceeding. So the basic key point is that he has not demanded but he has failed to given the reasonable explanation even he failed to do the effective cross-examination to impeach the credibility of the witness if the same is not done in that scenario situation would be against you because you have to remember the case of Neerasa versus state of NCT in which it is held that the evidences could be direct or circumstantial as far as prevention of corruption it is concerned so if that evidence is not there they could connect you with the circumstantial evidence so be careful by making the defense although they are bound to prove their case if you fail to do the efficient cross-examination specifically on the point of demand on the point of acceptance on the point of recovery and the other scenarios in that scenario you would not be able to impeach the credibility of the witness the things would be against you so be careful while doing the cross examination and apart from that if you are going to doing the cross examination on the currency note you have to be very much careful that do not accept the money has been given to you submit that it has not been given to you even you have not touched it it has been put on the table Doraj, without your knowledge or it has been put on the table and apart from that it has been trusted if you are not doing any examination or not doing any impeachment regarding the same it will be presumed that you have taken the same as a voluntary acceptance so always challenge the credibility of the prosecution witness by doing the cross-examination impeach the credibility and impeach the mode of recovery if you are able to raise the probable defense if you are able to do the proper cross-examination specifically on the point of major contradiction in that scenario you would be able to raise a probable defense and definitely you will get success but the concerned accused in that case has taken a contrary plea on the point of pendency of work apart from that he was totally silent on recovery of money if he would raise the plea that there was no recovery from him other than it has been trusted and prove the same by the concerned coercion witness the situation would be different so be careful i am saying that be careful while doing the cross assumption in that cases so this is an important legal update concerning your rights because in that case by having a good case the accused number one ultimately lost and accused number two without doing any proper work without any doing proper assumption got success because he simply entangled on a single defense that I have not demanded whatever money is given to me is without any knowledge that it is a bribe amount so any statement by accused number one would not be binding on me and ultimately he got appointed in the same case so accused number one got convicted his appeal has been dismissed and accused number two had been acquitted and his appeal has been accepted. 
So my basic submission is that while do the cross examination, be careful on demand, acceptance, recovery of money and other circumstances. Try to put the major connotation and try to impeach the credibility of the witnesses in the light of legal theories. You have to read the law. You have to very much conceptual and be updated. Do not read the old laws of 70s, 80s, 90s. Read 2022, 23, the recent versions of legal position and the prevention of corruption. Act, so that we could reach at the appropriate conclusions and could do the efficient cross-examination and could ask the efficient question that could damage the prosecution. So don't worry, don't be disappointed. If you are having a trial in that scenario, you must be very much vigilant. Make a proper brief, do proper research, be vigilant and fight in a confident manner and definitely we will win. So friends, this is an important legal update regarding the prevention of corruption act. This video is in English. For South Indians and for North Indians, I have recorded the version of this video in Hindi also. So be tuned, stay updated and thanks for subscribing Sony Arena. Lord Achistri. See you in the next video. Till then, Jai Hind, Jai Bharat.